Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're having a good day. Today, the skeleton is still lurking outside of our door, and we're going to make a little bit more basic progress here in the Minecraft Survival Guide world. I'm going to start out by leaving my front door, checking where the sun is in the sky, and it looks like we're already halfway through the day from the last episode. So my goal for today is going to be to look for some animals and potentially start a couple of farms for animals and crops. The first thing I want to do really is find some sheep because as I mentioned in the previous episode the wool from sheep can be used to make a bed and a bed is quite important to surviving in Minecraft because a bed will allow you to skip the night and basically start the next day almost immediately. So we're going to find and kill a couple of sheep. We're now using a stone sword as our primary weapon and I can also talk a little bit about combat in the process. I'm wandering back towards our spawn point over here to see if the sheep from the first episode are still there and they were. I kind of walked past them in the first episode and ignored them but now they are perfect training for our combat skills. Combat in Minecraft is relatively simple. You just left click to attack with whatever you have in your main hand and in this case we're going to attack the sheep once with a sword and it's not going to do a huge amount of damage. The stone sword doesn't do it a whole lot of damage, it's not going to kill the sheep in one hit. Instead we're going to kill it with a critical hit which is achieved by jumping and striking your target on the way down. You'll know you've done that right when you see those star-shaped particles appearing all around the thing you've hit. And since I mentioned the difference last time between the stone sword and the stone axe, the stone axe having a little bit of a slower attack but a heftier amount of damage, it should come as very little surprise to know that if you crit a sheep with a stone axe you will kill it basically in one shot, which is why you saw me using the stone axe most of the time in our introductory video. Now we have ourselves three wool, which should be enough to craft a bed. We've left our crafting table back at the house, but of course we could make one on the fly using the wood I've got on me if we wanted to. The other thing I'm going to do is grab a flower from the area because once you've got a bed, it's nice to personalize it. Any color of wool you use to make the bed, that'll be the color that the bed turns out. And in this case, we can dye the bed red using the red dye that we can craft from one of the poppies in the area. So if if you spot any flowers that seem like the colour you want to colour your bed sheets, then go for it, grab those flowers, and as soon as you make the bed you can dye it your favourite colour. And it's really the personal touches in a Minecraft world that help the whole thing feel like your own. We're back at our little house and it looks like the skeleton is gone. It seems to have despawned. Well that's perfect. We can head up into the house and we can make ourselves a bed at the crafting table, lay it in here and set our spawn point. This is really quite important and this is one of the things I wanted to cover in this episode. If you lay down a bed and right click on it, you will sleep in it if it's night time. But you'll also notice that a message popped up in the chat to say our respawn point was set here. You'll notice that the impending night has now switched to the dawn of a new day and we can begin exploring the environment once again. But it's worth noting that even if you don't have a night to sleep away, right clicking on a bed will still set your spawn point. I'm going to demonstrate that by moving it one block over. If we right click on that, you'll see it still says the respawn point has been set. So even if you can't sleep in a bed, it's possible to set your respawn point there. And what that now means is if I go out and die somewhere in the world, if I end up falling afoul of some skeletons or other monsters or something like that, we will find that I spawn in the house that we've created so far instead of at the world spawn point that we started off at in the beginning. So I think that's an important thing to know once you're set up in a Minecraft world. Make sure that you know where your spawn point is. It'll be easy to make some more tools if you leave some supplies in here and that means you can gear up and head out into the world again if you die. Now we have a bed, I think it's time to think about crop farms. And one of the things I wanted to do with this waterfall over here is use that to hydrate a series of crop farms that we can place over here on this side of the base. So I'm going to chop down this tree that we planted yesterday and we're going to grab a bunch of dirt and redirect this waterfall so that it runs into some channels which will hopefully hydrate our crop fields. Using the stone shovel we're just going to carve away a few blocks of the mountainside here. What we really need is a large flat area of dirt so that we can lay out some nice neat rows of crops 
and we know what's growing over here. You might want to make this a little bit more aesthetically pleasing if you're that way inclined, but personally, I think it's going to be easiest if we just lay this out and I can show you the basics. You'll notice that once we start adjusting blocks in this area, the water might redirect its flow a little bit, and that's what we're going to do now, actually. If we end up blocking off the water over here, we'll find that it's no longer flowing down into the body of this cave. The water will eventually start to disappear and will continue flowing down the hillside until it all disappears at the bottom of there. And that's an important thing to understand about water, is that it all flows from water sources, but it's not necessarily a liquid mass of its own. If there is not a water source nearby, then the water that flows down into this cave will eventually just dry up entirely. So having landscaped this hillside, we're going to carve out a couple of quick channels here. We're going to maybe put one there, and you'll notice that as soon as we broke a block near the water, it flowed down into this channel. That looks perfect. We'll go two blocks over, and we'll carve another one here, and then all we need to do is let the water flow into that one as well. And we already have a couple of rows of grass here and dirt on this side, which we can turn into our farmland. Maybe we'll bolster this one here as well, and that's looking good. We can combine those stacks of dirt, and we'll dip back into the house very briefly to craft ourselves a stone hoe. The hoe is the basic farm implement. You can make a stone one, we can make a, a wooden one or an iron one later. But now we have hold of this, all we need to do is right click on the blocks here and they will convert into farmland. So we actually now have an irrigated area of farmland. You'll notice after a while here, these farmland blocks will start to change color like those ones did. That indicates that they are hydrated, and that means that crops planted on them will grow a little bit faster. This will happen gradually over time, as long as there is a block of either a water source or flowing water within four blocks of the farmland. So all of this should be nice and easily hydrated. We've got our rows of farmland laid out, but what exactly are we going to plant here? That's the next question. Well, for that, we need to turn to the grasslands around us, and throughout the forest here, there are patches of grass which, if we break them, will occasionally drop us wheat seeds. And by breaking a few more pieces of grass around here, we should be able to acquire, let's say, 10 or so wheat seeds that we can use to start our first wheat farm. Oh, and in the process of that, it has started raining, and it looks like it's the sky is quite dark, so I'm concerned that this rain is going to develop into a thunderstorm. We need to be, yep, <laughs> we need to be a little bit wary of the weather because in thunderstorms, the sky darkens enough that hostile monsters can come out to play and I really want to avoid that right now. So for the minute, we're just going to return to our bed. You can sleep away a thunderstorm and that will also reset the rain cycle of the world, which should mean the rain clears up in the morning and we get a nice clear sky again. There we go. But I should be extra careful to make sure that a creeper doesn't sneak up on us after we've spent some time gathering some wheat seeds in the forest. There we go, punching all of that grass has finally yielded us 10 wheat seeds. So I'm going to hop back down the mountainside and plant all of this in one of our little farmland rows. Still a couple of blocks left to hydrate, but there we go, we get an advancement for that, a seedy place to let us know that we've planted our first seeds. Now that this farmland is hydrated, the wheat will slowly begin to grow, and once it does, we'll be able to harvest it, it will drop more seeds, and it will give us the wheat crop. From that, we can start to make bread and other types of food, and it's going to be very useful for our next goal, which is getting hold of some animals. Certain animals like sheep and cows will follow you around if you're holding wheat, so maybe we should go and get some more to increase our wheat crop here. There we go, got a few more wheat seeds to put in, and you'll notice that some of the wheat on this side has already started to grow. There are several stages to wheat growth though, so we aren't going to be harvesting these until the stalks are tall and pale yellow. In the meantime, we can just make sure that we are filling up the rest of these rows of farm land, and we'll take a look around for any other animals in the area that can supply us with food and other resources. Pigs are a good example of that. Pigs don't really do a huge amount in Minecraft other than provide you a little bit of food. We can have some more fun with pigs later on. You can actually put a saddle on one and ride it around if you want to, but for now, they drop raw pork chops, which is a similar foodstuff to beef. Once you cook it, restores four points of hunger. Very, very useful food source in the early game. Right now, this waterfall is looking a little bit messy. I wonder if we can do something 
about that. Using some of the cobblestone that I've brought with me, I'm going to wander back into the house, put the cobblestone into the furnace, and we can take out the chicken that I've been cooking in there. And we're going to put that in the item slot. We're going to put a bit of fuel in the fuel slot and we're going to smelt the cobblestone up. That will actually transform it back into the natural stone that we see generating all around our world. And once we have that, we can transform it into other blocks, which will look a little bit more decorative around our wheat farm there. Okay, having now smelted up a bunch of stone and got the rest of the food on the go as well, we're going to transform that stone into stone bricks. We're going to craft those in our 2x2 crafting interface. We don't even need a crafting table for this one. And this is going to make our farm look a little bit more put together over here. I think the way we're going to do this is to create little waterfalls that are cut off from this larger waterfall here. And we have to be a little bit careful about redirecting the water so it doesn't completely flood the crop field and cause us to plant everything over again. So let's start at the top. I usually find that's a good way to do things when you're dealing with water and yep, no, it's already happened. We've definitely cut off a couple of the wheat seeds in our farm. Not to worry though, we'll deal with that in just a second. We're going to come around the top of this so we cut off the water as it flows over the side. We're going to make sure that this area is cut off so the water doesn't redirect that way. And now all of the water should flow downwards into the farm there and once it goes away, you'll notice that the farmland might get a little bit dehydrated again. Yeah, there you go. You can see, you can start to see it fairly quickly actually dehydrating there. Not to worry, we're going to fix that in just a second. Let's have this come out one more block like so. We'll maybe put a little block around it and then we'll let the water flow down through this gap here by removing those blocks. And there we go. Once we fill this in with the rest of the dirt, it flows down into this channel nice and easily, expands our farm a little bit as well, so we can place a couple of more farmland there. And I think it's going to feel quite nice if it's just flowing down from these sort of pipes that we're building for it. We'll do the same over here, letting that flow down there and into the farmland. And I think just for the sake of appearances, we're going to add a channel over here as well, even though we don't technically need it to hydrate this farmland here. There we go, and we can shore up the back wall of this with a little bit of dirt, maybe some stone brick stairs there, and that's, yeah, that's looking quite nice. I think that's going to work out for us. In the process of that, I did end up trampling one of my pieces of farmland. If you end up jumping on top of a piece of farmland, sometimes you'll find that that reverts back to dirt and in that case we can just hoe it once again with the hoe and make sure that we replant whatever was growing there. There we go, that's all flowing quite nicely and in the process our wheat is taking a little while to grow but no worries, we should be able to wait around for it to finish growing and then hopefully we'll be able to bring some animals in from outside. At last, we have a few pieces of wheat which are close enough to being fully grown. And this is why I don't go for crops super early in my world, is because they always take a little while to fully grow. But in this case, we can grab this piece of wheat here, which is going to drop, as I said, wheat and between one and three wheat seeds usually. And we'll be able to harvest this one here as well, which is going to give us much the same thing. It gives us more seeds to replant so we can propagate our wheat field even more. And now we have two wheat, which is not going to be able to take us very far in terms of food, but is the perfect number when we want to start an animal farm. And obviously, we have a couple of other wheat stalks here which are very close to growing, but just haven't reached that final stage yet. Now is the time to start thinking about setting up animal farms and I've been clearing out and flattening a section of the hill here which we're going to use to set up a fenced off area where we will hold our first animals. Hopefully we're going to get a couple of sheep or some cows or something like that that will fit nicely in that space. I also need to work on a staircase or something because I'm a little bit awkward traversing this space in the meantime. So we're going to hop in here. We're going to get whatever wood we have, which is not a whole lot right now, but I can make a few more fences and a few more sticks out of the birch planks here. We are going to craft a whole bunch of fences, combine them with the ones that we've already got, and that's going to be the start of our animal farm. There we go, we have 20 fences. Not a whole lot for right now, but it's hopefully going to expand a little bit later. We are going to set these up along the side of here. We're going to bring this out a couple more blocks. And I think, yeah, a 5x5 five five area of fences should be good enough for now. Now we need to take our wheat in hand and go out in search of some sheep or potentially cows, which we can lure back 
into this pen. And while I did spend the earlier part of this episode killing some sheep around here, trust me when I say that there should be a couple more lurking in the trees somewhere. In fact, there are some over here. There is at least one. Hopefully we'll find another one. But for now, you'll notice that the sheep is paying very close attention to me because I'm holding wheat in my hands. So actually, if I switch to third person, you'll see that that sheep is going to follow me at quite a range when I'm holding this piece of wheat. And occasionally their attention does wander off, so you have to be a little bit careful about it. But as long as I walk my way over here, we should hopefully be able to lure the sheep back into the pen. There we go. It broke line of sight for a second while I was behind the tree and now the sheep is wandering off. But you just have to get within range and let it notice you again and it should be able to follow you. Now if I dance around the edge of the pen here, the sheep is going to do the same thing, but thankfully all I need to do is stand close to it and nudge it down into the pen. <laughs> and it's going to sit there, surrounded by the fences, unable to leave the pen, and I'm gonna go and get another sheep. We've got some more pigs up here on the hillside, but you'll notice that the pigs aren't following me when I'm holding wheat, and that is because each animal has its preferred type of food. For pigs, this is carrots, potatoes, or beetroot. For animals like sheep and cows, it is wheat. For chickens, it is wheat seeds, and there are various other animals we'll find later which will have their own preferred foods. While I'm up here, I'm just going to take a quick look around and admire the view, because this is the sort of lake structure that we've been looking at for a little while. There are some caves and mountains around here, or at least that's a, a giant hill. I don't know if it really qualifies as a mountain anymore. And from here, I should be able to take a look. Yep, there we go. There is a sheep down there in the field. It's taken a while for me to locate the sheep, but thankfully we found one and we should be able to lead this one back to our sheep pen. If the terrain is a little bit difficult to traverse, it's important to note that animals will follow you across water, although they will do that a little bit slowly. And so to cross the water here, I'm actually going to step back onto land, make myself another crafting table real quick, and we're going to craft the boat. Taking down that birch tree for planks, we're going to turn five of those planks into a boat. From there, we can put the boat in the water, or we can even put it on land. And when one of the sheep feels like following me, we can actually lure the sheep directly into the boat here. There we go. The sheep is now sitting in the boat. We can right click on it to get in it and simply use the W, A, S and D keys to steer. And hopefully this should bring it back towards our base. I'm going to use my axe to break the boat on the other side and hopefully we should be able to lead the sheep into the pen before night falls. There we go. Another quick nudge. Perfect. The sheep is in there and we'll go back for the other one in the morning. For now, I need to get to my bed. <laughs> Good morning. I am delighted to find that a bit more wheat has grown here in the field. So we're going to harvest a little bit more of that. We got one more here. I did accidentally break another one of those, but it's fine we can just replant it and the field is looking healthier than ever give or take the sections I have already trampled so before we go back for that last sheep I want to point out the mechanics of breeding all we need to do is feed each of these animals their favorite food and they will breed with each other provided that the two animals are compatible and they'll produce a child and now we have an adorable baby sheep in our midst and we earned an advancement for breeding two animals together. Now let's take to the water once again in our boat. We'll be able to row down this channel and pick up that last sheep who should hopefully still be waiting over here on the hillside somewhere near my crafting table. I'm actually going to pack up this crafting table and take it with me. It helps to have one in your base and one on you occasionally. And let's row this one back to the sheep pen as well and we will have four sheep. So now our four sheep are comfortably in their pen and are eating the grass every so often. The younger sheep will do that much more frequently than the adults will. And you might think that maybe we could just spam them with as much wheat as possible and get a ton of baby sheep really fast. Unfortunately, there is a five minute cooldown time between them being able to breed. So we're not going to be able to breed any of these sheep for another five minutes or so, but that's fine. It'll give more of our wheat field a chance to grow, which is already doing it looks like. And I think we'll do a little bit more work to make this area a little tidier so that I can have a staircase and I don't have to keep hopping around the landscape awkwardly like this. It'll also give our baby sheep a little bit of time to grow up, which should take about 10 minutes of real time, roughly speaking. You can speed this up by feeding it wheat if you want to, but the adults will start to crowd around and try and get the wheat as well. But the idea is that you can breed up as many animals as you want to. And at that point, you can kill them for food. Obviously, sheep drop mutton, which we have in our inventory 
inventory and we've been eating occasionally when we can. But sheep will also drop wool and there's a way of acquiring a sheep's wool without having to kill it. Just like in real life, we can shear the sheep to get hold of wool and that is why we're going to turn to the cave for the last thing we're going to do in this episode which is acquire some iron. There is a little patch of iron up there in the ceiling which we might get a little bit later on but I did notice down here on the left hand side we have a couple of iron ore blocks in the wall. I'm going to break those with my stone pickaxe and we're going to use the two raw iron that we've got here in the furnace to create iron ingots. I made a little bit more charcoal earlier, but these shouldn't take all that much to cook, so we're just going to put a couple of planks in there. We'll put the two raw iron in there, and the first iron tool we're going to craft in this series will be a set of shears. We'll come back for iron pickaxes and so forth a little bit later, but I want to do another episode about how to find iron and where it is more likely to pop up, because we're probably going to combine that with a first time caving episode very soon. But in the meantime, we've acquired our first hardware and we're going to turn that into a set of shears. We'll take that out to the sheep pen and with the shears in our main hand, we can right click on the sheep, not left click. Notice we are right clicking on the sheep and they will drop their wool. This obviously ends up with the sheep looking a little bit embarrassingly naked for a while, but that is why they eat the grass so often. You'll notice that the sheep end up wandering over to a square that still has the green top of grass around it, and eventually they'll eat it and replenish their wool like so. And that's what the little one is doing right now. And wow, it grew up in front of our eyes, ready to be sheared. Imagine that. All right, so now each of these sheep has been able to give us their wool and we have 13 white wool, which is not too bad. I'm gonna show you one last trick for the animal pen that's going to make them a lot easier to manage because as you can see, we've now surrounded ourselves with fences and just like the sheep, we're unable to jump out of here. But one thing we can do with the white wool is turn it into a couple of layers of carpet. Carpet is primarily used for decoration in Minecraft builds, but it has a couple of other uses. One of which is if you put it on top of a fence post, it gives you something that the player can jump onto and then jump over, but the animals inside will not. Even if we try and lure them over here with the prospect of more tasty wheat, they're not going to be able to jump up onto that carpet at all. So that's actually perfect. <laughs> that's a very, very useful thing to know. And you can spam a couple more carpets on either side here if you want to have a nice, easy spot to jump over. Personally, I think I'm going to employ that in here as a bit of a welcome mat, <laughs> like that. It's starting to make a house a home a little bit here. And I'm going to spend the rest of my time breeding up a few more sheep in here so we have a healthy supply of wool on the go and tending to my wheat field. But now we know the basics of crop farming and animal farming, I think that is probably going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Folks, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to leave a like on it for me. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.